Hi, welcome to everyone's favorite segment, Mailbag. Let's get straight into it. Thank you very much, Max Button. Winning name. It's like Max Power. Um, Max Button. Fantastic. From Erin Affair here in not only Australia, but New South Wales as well. And this has to be the heaviest mailbag item I've ever got. Uh, could be pushing 20 kilos or something like that. Don't know what that is in pounds for you Yanks. Multiply by 2.2. It's backwards there. Reverse technique. Thought this deserved a look before ending up in the bin. So we have a bit of junked electronics. It was once a very valuable bit of kit. By the way, update. Um, I hit, woohoo! I hit 10,000 subscribers on Library. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Thank you very much to everyone who subscribed on Library. And because it's a decentralized, that's just on library.tv, by the way. But because it's a decentralized network, it's actually um, hard to know exactly how many uh, people watch and follow on the Library network. Because Library's like a uh, protocol, just like HTTP is, except it's LBRY. But yes, 10,000 subscribers. Absolutely fantastic. And... Uh, if you don't know, I've done a video on this, might have to link it in, but I became a full-time YouTuber in 2011 with only 10,000 subscribers. So you've got to watch my video to know how I actually did that. Anyway, um, yeah, so it, it feels like old but new again. Absolutely fantastic. So if you're not subscribed to library, please do. Okay, it's rack mount. I can feel the rack mount digging into my stomach. Oh, it's not a bloody UPS or something, is it? It's not just full of bloody batteries, is it? It's foo. Okay, it's a rack mount bit of kit. Huawei? Um, okay. Huawei? Didn't know they did. Like that sort of stuff, but anyway. And here it is. It's a Huawei, and it's just got some uh, ethernet -y type interfaces. I'm not sure. The one's an RS-232 uh, interface. I like how they put the board rate on there. Check that out. 115,200. Not sure why these are on an angle. They're optical ports, are they? So that they can come out at a better angle here. But anyway, it's got alarm, run. What's on the back? Uh, two IEC um, with individual switches. Fault, run, alarm, fault. <sighs> Slide this out. There we go. That's a, uh, wow, that's a, that's a nice looking power supply. Wow, I, no, I don't think it's a UPS. I think it's just a really heavy something or other. 53 volt output, 15 amp max. Wow, what a Bobby Dazzler. Well, it turns out it's uh, not a UPS. It's a multi-point control unit for a video conferencing uh, system, the VP9630. Uh, for those playing along at home, dates from uh, 2013. And Max, uh, sure enough, says that it comes from a backbone for a video conferencing system for emergency services. Um, the, one of the power supplies is dud, apparently. So it, I just had a quick look, and it, I'm still... Not really sure what it actually does, but it somehow controls uh, up to 12 1080p, uh, 1080-60p video channels. That was apparently the first unit, or they claim it was the first unit on the market, to do real-time uh, transcoding of that many 1080p, 60p channels. I guess they all come via the um, optical interface and it processes them and then streams them out somehow i don't know so the amazing weight in this thing just comes from the power supplies and all the electronics and other modules there's a fan module oh geez can nick those fans got no idea if they're any good or not but uh yeah you know always uh put those i've got a fan i got a bin full of fans i love those custom connectors check that out <laughs> that's just for the fan module wow <laughs> spared no expense Really spectacular, spared no expense. Really like how there's a 4mm jack on here for your ESD strap. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. And a big uh, ass earth terminal as well. Aha! Uh -huh. Figured it out. I was about to get all medieval on its ass, and then I figured out that it actually slides forward. Uh, it, it seems obvious, but yeah, trust me. Anyway, <laughs> there we go. Well, we're in like Flynn. Wow, look at the hardware inside this puppy. But because it does dedicated hardware-based uh, H.264 1080-60p uh, encoding and decoding on multiple channels, it's got to have a ton of stuff. It reminds me of the 
Uh, the Sony video systems, which I'll link in at the end and down below if you haven't seen them, they're absolutely fascinating, those uh, video editing, professional video editing solutions. This one's not video editing, but this is uh, like video conferencing and things like that. So we've got multiple cards in here. Wow, this is, wow, look at the thick, oh, this is thick as. 4.2 millimeter PCB. Oh, that's thick as, bro. Hi to all my New Zealand viewers. <coughs> Check out that big power connector over there. Look at that beast. That has got screw terminals on the back of it. So this comes in from the power supply. So they're just distributing. What's a little A-pin dip in a socket there? We'll have to check that out. There's another power connector. That one's only got screw, oh, two screw terminals. Oh, ripped off. Oh, look at the ground. What is it, a spike? That's not rigidly connected. What on earth? What? As you slide the board out. Oh, does it like make first contact when you slide it in or something like that? Is it a... Anyway, wow, there's a ton of engineering in this puppy. Look at it. Wow, unbelievable. How much, if anyone has any idea how much this would have cost, and this is like the runt of the litter. Uh, really, there are much bigger ones available as part of a big uh, cascaded, you know, video conferencing uh, distribution type uh, streaming system, but wow. Anyway, so they're clearly going to be using multiple internal layers, probably, you know, two ounce or even more copper inside there just to get the power distribution. And, of course, you use the uh, 4.2 millimeters for rigidity as well. Um, it's not like it has to be that thick to carry the current. It's just, you know, they're using it as a rigid structure there. <laughs> Brilliant. Because we saw before 15 amps per power supply, so 30 amps total. So, you know, it's, it's large current, but, like, not absolutely enormous in the scheme of things. There's another little ground spike down there. Check that out. It's not making contact, but uh, they've certainly gone the effort. And you can see the uh, good thermal design of this too. Of course, we've got uh, spacings between. We've got three layers of boards here. I don't think there's another layer under there. No, that's the uh, power supply slide under there. So we've got three layers of stackable boards. It looks like we can stack more here. And I believe this is part of the system. You can actually continue to stack these boards up and up. I'm not sure what the limit is. Uh, we'll have to look at the uh, manual configuration manual for that. But you can get larger and larger cases for this thing. Hence why the case is probably a bit unusual in its uh, design and uh, construction because you can actually get thicker ones that expand upwards. And obviously this is like one of our main processing uh, boards over here. And each one of these boards, this looks like we've got at least one, two, three, Four. We've got four separate boards, probably the same configuration down on the main board, perhaps, um, for doing all the video uh, encoding and decoding, plus all your uh, web interface and main processing, because all this uh, sort of stuff, it's got like a web uh, interface control and things like that. So that's probably the main uh, you know, web interface processor type thing over there. But anyway, looking at the thermal designs, right, you've got to get a lot of airflow in this thing. So it's sucking it through the vents on the side here and it sucks the air in and blows it out through these three fans fairly evenly spread over all the boards like that. So that's really quite nice. And yes, they do have the fins in the correct orientation for that airflow. You'll notice that they're actually long like that. If you flipped them around the other way, so you had mostly the flat part um, and the airflow going through like that, it'd, it'd, you'd get turbulent flow and all that sort of stuff, and you wouldn't be able to get the heat as effectively out of there. You're effectively like uh, blocking that airflow. So, yep, they've chosen the right orientation there. That's not by accident. That's all part of good engineering thermal design. So this really is quite amazing. If you have an idea of how much uh, this sort of gear is worth, please let us know in the comments down below. And who knew that uh, Huawei, because we just know them, uh, like, of them making phones, but other people in the industry, they might know them. They're into, like, uh, the professional electronics uh, market like this, just like uh, Sony and other uh, companies are that you don't think of. You know, Sony, you think of just consumer gear, but they practically owned the entire, like, you know, tons of, like, professional video editing and all sorts of other professional uh, recording tools and things like that. Screws out, but I like these, uh, this plastic uh, cover here.
Oh, oscillator porn. Look at that. Vectron OCO. That would be oven controlled oscillator at 32.768 megahertz. Thank you very much. Nice binary multiple there. But yeah, that'd be worth a pretty penny. But they're, yeah, they're serious about their uh, stable clock here. Nice. You'd salvage that. I think I got all the screws. And of course, like we've just got a bunch of uh, DRAM on the back and things like that, and just some miscellaneous stuff, some local oscillator and other, you know, transceivers and other housekeeping stuff and whatnot. You can see here by all the bypassing and all the uh, vias there, huge BGA, one of the, you know, thousand pin BGA, going to be some custom ASIC uh, processy thingy, video processor, encoder, uh, decoder, then another one, okay, it could be an FPGA too, and then another one here, another one here, another one here, another one here, well, gee, geez, that's heavy, and we know why. Oh, look at that beastie. Wow, huge heat sinking under there. Once again, the orientation of the fins like this. They're very deliberate like this because the airflow is coming in like this, and it's got to flow over those fins, even though they're not very tall, so not a terribly efficient heat sink in that uh, aspect of like a surface area. Fins there, but they've only got limited height, and they would have done all the thermal testing calculations to ensure it's correct. So they knew what they were doing. Wow, absolute beast. That one's just stuck down there. It's a bit how you're doing. It's on an angle. That's all the power up there for it. That's all. Obviously, we're probably going to have like a whole bunch of uh, local supplies. There might be, you know, 1.2 volts, 1.8 volts, 3.3. Look at those MOSFETs up there. Wow, that's some beefy switch mode right there. And uh, fused as well, a poly switch on the output. So very nice. Oh, you'd, like you'd keep these boards. It's just chock full of premium goodness. Well, there's a surprise. I expected uh, these bottom boards to be identical. This one uh, looks like it's going to be, but this one here, significantly different. But yeah, I expected four identical. So to have that oddball one, but look at all the, look at the bypassing on this bad boy. Look at this. <laughs> look at all the huge FPGAs or ASICs we're going to have under here. This is some serious ass hardware, and this is not going to be built down to a price in any way. There'd be zero penny pinching in this, because price is no object uh, in this sort of market. Uh, you pay what you pay for the performance of this. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars just for this kit, let alone all the higher end uh, models and things like that as part of the system. I'm sure this is tens of thousands of dollars. Easy. And there you have it. We have a grand total of uh, three of these boards like this. However many uh, video encoder, decoder channels that is, I don't know. And it looks like nine identical uh, channels on here. They could be FPGAs, for example. Lots of huge tantalum uh, bypassing on there. And a bunch of uh, memory for each one, of course. And is, is there... No, there's no more memory on the other side, but a ton of bypassing. I mean, that's just... That's nuts. <laughs> but... That's what you get on uh, modern FPGAs, and a lot of designers tend to go overboard, but once again, all power supply stuff up here. And check out the uh, high-speed board-to-board inner connects like this. You'll notice that the inner one is big ground contact like that. Very nice. So these are all really ultra-high-speed uh, differential uh, pairs. You can run through these things and designed for high-speed board-to-board interconnects. Not sure of the uh, brand or model of this. It could be, I don't know, a Samtech or something like that. They cost a pretty penny in their own right. And so much for my theory that uh, it would contain more channels on the baseboard. Like, you know, you'd, you'd buy the base model unit and you'd get X amount of channels and then you expand them up with the modules. Nope. No, that's just a, uh, it's just a bare board on the bottom. And uh, looks like they have something on the other side here. These bypass caps aren't going to be there for nothing. Not only do we have bypass caps, but we also have little uh, series termination resistors. So yeah, there's something on the other side. I think I'm going to have to get this whole puppy out. And yep, there's another chip under there. So yeah, the whole thing's going to come out. <laughs> Jeez. All right, this whole puppy is going to slide out like this. Little, got some foam down here. Oh, careful when you're pulling out boards like this. The pins on the bottom, they can rip you open. I've already uh, drew some blood on uh, the case of this thing. Having a play. Oh, hang on. Uh, no. Oh, that's what those pins. 
Right, those pins up there, that one there, and that one there, they're designed to stop this board sliding out. Wow, didn't expect that. I thought this would just pull out, but I guess they were... I think the deal is, is that that whole back plane has to come out before this board can slide. That's a bit disappointing. Here you go. This whole thing now just lifts out like that. And by the way, check out this. Uh, the huge power input there is just a uh, press fit contact. They aren't soldered. No, they didn't forget to solder that. That's just uh, how they are. You can actually get those. They do work uh, quite well in the industry and uh, no need for that solder rubbish. And there's the uh, other mate inside of that huge big power one. There's the three-way jobby. And those big uh, spikes look like they're just for uh, alignment when you put the boards in. They don't actually do anything electrically, really. Anyway, version A board, it's upside down, so all the electrons are going to fall out. Here's our five-row data connector. I'm not actually sure where that goes. Like, there's nothing else, like, there to do anything with it. So... Yeah, I'm not sure what the deal is. It's like, it's really just a power distribution. And absolutely no surprises at all for finding that's an E-squared prom. It's doing some sort of product ID, uh, something like that. You know, they're not going to worry about, it's not for like security or anything. They're not going to worry about anyone ripping off uh, this product. The engineering, if you can rip off this product, good luck to you. Um, you deserve to because a phenomenal amount of engineering has gone into this. Looks like we've got another 4.2 millimeter PCB down in here, which uh, connects all of the, well, the other side of the power supplies. And you can see the power supply connector down in there. Wow, it's a beauty. Wow, look at those dual wipe contacts there. So that really is just a beautiful piece of uh, system engineering design, really. And as I said, it's designed, I believe, to stack up like even higher and higher. And uh, you can put in, like larger and larger cases on this thing and it's designed to grow upwards. Every aspect of this spared no expense. That is a gorgeous PCMCIA holder. Wow, that thing alone must have cost, imagine the single one-off bomb cost of that. That would be enormous. Anyway, that's a Western Digital Silicon Drive, registered trademark, one gig, uh, <laughs> solid state drive, manufacturing date, 44th week uh, 2013 so you know that would have been hot stuff back in the day I guess okay over here we start off with our uh, we've got our ethernet -y interfaces whatever they are and that RS-232 one as well we've got the uh, magnetics down in here they're not built into there um, these are your two uh, fiber interfaces so they're, they're like fiber modules just uh, slide into there so all the uh, laser dye goodness is inside uh, the module, the receivers, and uh, transmit stuff is in there, and this is basically just a holder, uh, pretty much. Board-to-board -board interconnect. Got now Tira Max 2 CPLD there. It's just doing some, like, general housekeeping stuff. And uh, battery backup, of course, for the real-time clock. Is that, that'd be the real-time clock chip. I think I see an ST branding on that puppy. And then we've got all the power supply goodness. Wow, look at these. You would salvage these. These are, like, uh, obviously they farm out the uh, design of these uh, to someone. But, you know, you can do them in-house. But anyway, it, uh, people ask, why would you put it on a module? Why not just put all these parts on the main piece? PCB like well you do here okay this is integrated with this well this is a higher power solution and look the magnetics that's a complete ferrite going on both of the sides of the boards there and we've got a, a, a planar transformer which means that the windings are going to be inside on the PCB there so and you don't want to be designing this sort of stuff on this massive a board. I mean, you've got enough issues uh, with this board. Imagine if you like goofed up and you had to respin this whole board just because somebody screwed up on one of the little uh, power supply ones like this. You could argue, well, why didn't they do it here? This is a lot simpler uh, than uh, this solution here. So anyway, and they, as I said, they probably farm that out and buy it in. So you definitely want to desolder. They're soldered direct. Uh, get those out because they're valuable. They'd be like super efficient. Uh, really high power uh, converters you can use for your projects and things like that. Gorgeous. No surprises for guessing the brand of the capacitors down in there. I don't even think I need to show you. Uh, top notch quality, everything on this. They would not be saving a single cent anywhere. They just wouldn't bother. 
tiny little oscillator down in there. That's for something going on there. And then a Broadcom chipset over here. We can have a look what that's doing. Do we have a part number on that? Let's have a look at that. I'm sure that's uh, doing something that we can find out about. And other stuff on the bottom. Well, drivers, maybe like interfacing, housekeeping for uh, interfacing with the other boards up here. So there's the board in all its goodness. And there's those power supply modules soldered down there. So you definitely uh, want to try and get those out. Unfortunately, you know, they're often like a tight as a nun's nasty inside the uh, holes there and well yeah, sucking out the solder on those could be a, a bit of a pain but anyway worth a shot not much doing not sure what's going on down in the corner down there oh that's all the ethernet -y, uh type stuff over there they've removed some of the uh, ground plane for uh controlled impedance reasons all this other stuff up here well this is all ti we got a TI jobby in there. I'm not sure what that's doing. Xilinx uh, Spartan again. Another couple of chips in there, which I do not recognize at all. And then another one of those uh, TI chips up there. So if we can get the data on those, I'll pull them. And is that some sort of clock driver? That wouldn't surprise me. That kind of looks PLL-y to me. So I'd say clock driver offhand. Got a couple of surface mount fuses down here. Very nice. As I said, that oven controlled oscillator. Oh, you want to get that bad boy out of there. You bet your bottom dollar. Uh, probably FPGA under there, is it? Uh, driving for interfacing, perhaps. Stuff like that. And uh, the power supply input up there. Got another uh, surface mount fuse jobby there. And, oh, it's just brilliant. And if you're wondering, can you bend a 4.2 millimeter PCB? Yeah, well, it's just fiberglass. There you go. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah. Right, so what's going on with this board here? Massive uh, FPGA or ASIC. Got some firmware down here. Dead giveaway with the uh, stickers on it. And what's a Cortina? Well, I know what a Ford Cortina is, but I don't know what a Cortina is here. Made in Canada? Really? Is there a fab in Canada that makes that? <laughs> there is. Please leave it in the comments. No less than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven oscillators. None on the bottom? <laughs> no, that's really quite remarkable. Anyway, looks like we've got some, uh, is that SRAM? That could be high-speed SRAM, is it? Or is that DRAM? I don't know. Looks like we've got some sort of Broadcom chipset down there. Not sure what that is. Two of them. And as for all the power supply stuff around here, no surprises for finding like a linear tech part on here. They're one of the most expensive in the business, but they're, they're brilliant. Doing some uh, shunt, current shunt measurement there by the looks of it. And I got the heat gun out and I managed to get that heat sink off. Um, it was stuck on there good and proper. Don't think my isopropyl is going to get that off. Some scrape in, but we'll get there. Well, no surprises for finding an Intel in there. What's a WPIXP2350? Well, it turns out the IXP2350 is a network processor. Uh, 2004 vintage is when that came out. So, yeah, this is the main uh, processor that's running all the applications uh, software and, and probably like doing lots of the uh, like the networking OS and all sorts of stuff. Anyway, this is running the application. This is running the whole show. So onto this board here. Now I looked at the manual. It says it uh, contains, well the base model anyway, contains eight uh, dedicated audio processors and we have nine here unless my count is out and it wouldn't be the all the video stuff because I think that's all on the other boards because that's the main purpose of this thing. Best guess would be that this is doing the audio processing. I've got a Max 2 CPLD that's just doing housekeeping and we'll have a well, I can't really find any info on that apart from that well it's related to Huawei in some way so I'm not sure whose logo that is. If you do know what that is, uh, leave it in the comments down below. Anyway, this puppy here is a uh, PCI to PCI bridge. So obviously, you know, we've got a PCI interface. We saw these on the other boards uh, as well. So they're just using those as uh, generic PCI interfaces to each one of these boards. And that makes sense. And there's lots of experience and knowledge with uh, PCI interfacing. It's fantastic to use and it's going to do the business. So yeah, no surprises for there. But anyway, I'll try and pop one of these off. 
not too hard you just get the uh, heat gun I had it to 150 degrees and then just heat it up for like 30 seconds and then it just pops well it doesn't pop off you've got to put a bit of force but yeah we're gonna have to scrape this one as well and the TMS 320 fanboys go wild. I'm a bit of a 320 fanboy myself. And uh, yeah, this would almost certainly be doing the audio uh, processing because that would be a classic I've done on TMS 320 is it is like the de facto industry standard uh, digital signal process. And one of the classic uses for these would be for audio process, real-time audio processing. So yeah, no doubt that's what it's doing. I think this is the audio uh, card. Why there's nine of them, I don't know, an extra one for housekeeping or an extra channel just for good measure. Not sure, but uh, yep, one of those dedicated to uh, each audio processing stream. And once again, like it's all digital, it's got it like it comes in digital. It's not like this is like sampling analog audio. This is not an analog uh, product. It comes in via the fiber, ethernet internet of things thing, you know, whatever. Um, all comes via that digital and um, then it does its uh, dedicated uh, uh, processing of the audio, you know, probably uh, filtering or other uh, type stuff. And it does it all in dedicated hardware. Every, every channel gets its own dedicated DSP and that's what you're paying for. You're paying for this dedicated hardware. You know, maybe try and do this on even a like a you know a top range gamer kitty PC and uh, like it's just gonna bog down once you render dozens of different uh, 1080p videos and audio all at the same time and things like that. Like in filter it and do all that sort of stuff. It's just gonna keel over. This is why you have dedicated hardware. And I got the heat sinks off this bad boy. Uh, this is the obviously the video encoding uh, decoding. Unfortunately, um, my scraping technique didn't work very well with this. It is an Altera something. So it's an Altera FPGA, something FPGA, um, a big ass FPGA. Um, as uh, you'd probably expect, looked at the numbers on these, but herein uh, lies the issue. If you want to get the heat out of all these, you can put like individual small heat sinks on all of them, or you can go for one larger heat sink, which they've decided to do here. The problem is, is that these chips are different height profiles. So how do you solve that? Well, you can do it a couple of ways, but one way they decided to do it is to actually machine out the heatsink so it's actually got the, um, the, like a raised part that comes in contact with the chips down there, the, the smaller chips. So bingo, like how many times multiple have you just increased the cost of that heatsink by having to do that operation but thermally um that was the best decision that they came with as i said um they wouldn't be saving cost on this thing no sorry bob anyway um interestingly this one is different to those three and the tms 320 fanboys go wild again um the bigger device under there is a tms 320 dm 8168 for those playing along at home well, as it turns out, that's just not any TMS 320 uh, like audio processor. That's actually a DaVinci coprocessor. It's got an ARM Cortex on there at like over a gig plus a uh, DSP uh, processor as well, as well as a video encoding engine. And uh, yeah, it's a specific um, DSP and dedicated hardware encoding for video and audio processing so there's four channels of those i presume one per uh video because there's only one video engine on there and this one it's an analog devices jobby aha that adv chip that is a uh, hdmi receiver and 12-bit hdmi digitizer so obviously there uh, maybe the giant FPGA over here is uh, decoding all the serial uh, data coming in from the network. And let's say you've got, you know, streaming video coming in and then splits it up into the multiple channels and then feeds it into the uh, separate uh, encoder, uh, separate, sorry, HDMI uh, receiver, and then um, processes it inside the uh, DSP. And then that'll shoot it back out, perhaps. That'd be my guess anyway, but... But I haven't looked into the architecture of this thing, so yeah, I don't know. Why is this one different? Well, it turns out that's actually a uh, now owned by uh, Broadcom um, a PCI switch. So like a six port PCI switch. So there you go. They're still doing uh, PCI stuff at that point in the system. Is that another 
analog devices under there. So, uh, yeah, I, because they had... For, it's just the layout's a bit odd um, because this one's probably associated with this one and this one with this one, um, something like that. So, yeah, <laughs> they probably just... That could just be a layout uh, thing. They just went, oh, you know, but you would have laid this out as a block first and then duplicated it like this and then figured out how to fit this in. So it seems a bit oddball, but anyway. You didn't seriously think I was going to finish this video without showing you inside this bad boy. <laughs> oh, let's check it out. These are obviously uh, two fans. And yep. Whoa, look at that. Oh, beautiful. Thing of beauty. Mix of surface mount and through hole as you'd expect once again spared no expense on this thing designed by uh designed and manufactured by a company called vapor um and i've uh, never heard of them but look it's got a relay down in there real fair income relay uh okay we've got uh mod look dual mov uh protection it just looks really gorgeous look at the uh single-sided phenolic pcb up here they're just look they're just using that board there just for the mains wiring so the main starts over here. Look at the protection. Look at the size of those mobs. Oh, they just suck up the jewels. Wow. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so that's just super impressive. Wow. And is that a spark gap there? I think it might be. <laughs> Brilliant. Belt and braces. And then we've got our uh, multi-stage uh, common mode chokes here. Absolutely fantastic. Look at the, the earthing up there is first class, of course, as you'd expect. Absolutely terrific. And look at all the, uh, look, they've just individually heat shrunk all of the wires there. Just this ribbon cable going over here. Like, they just didn't care about optimizing uh, manufacturing cost of this. They couldn't give a rat's. And are they uh, two input fuses there? Look at the input resistors there for surge. And ah, uh, it's just fantastic. You want to uh, salvage that board, put it in your junk bin for sure. And don't know the brand of those caps though. Anyone? Shanghai or something? Sorry, I just can't can't see that from here. So main switching devices. They gunked them down, down in there. And it all looks uh, really uh, top quality. No worries whatsoever. Fantastic. Got multiple uh, MOV protection on the output here. Wow. So yeah, that likely cost a pretty a penny. If anyone would uh, want to hazard a guess, please leave it in the comments down below. Like, they just, like, didn't care. What's, uh, you know, when this power supply fails, which has got uh, dual, this is a dual redundant power supply system, by the way. It's not because there's, it says it's two plus two redundant, which means I do believe it needs both of these power supplies in the system to work, but when you tie it into another system, it can actually have uh, redundant uh, power supplies. So there'd be outputs um, here, which would, uh, you know, allow them, like tell them it's, uh, they'd be monitoring, tell them it's failed, or they'd be monitoring on the other board. They know it's failed and they can switch them over redundantly uh, to keep your video stream going. So it's all about reliability, both in terms of power supplies and also they've got a uh, redundant capability in the uh, switches as well the fiber optic interfaces and the ethernet interfaces so yeah very highly redundant product so there you go i hope you enjoyed that and thank you very much max for sending this uh, fairly unique and almost certainly hideously expensive if you have to ask the price you can't afford it um a bit of video encoding technology just the bomb cost in this is absolutely enormous but look at all the engineering that goes into this if you think designing a new uh, huawei mobile phone is a big job and it is imagine the team that it took to work on this and how many years they worked on just this niche product and then they've got to get the return of all that nre engineering cost to design these things if you've got any idea how big the market is for this uh, video streaming type technology how many units uh they sold or they uh, typically sell when is this thing still around is people are people still using them leave it in the comments if you know uh what uh replaced it are they like uh, just like racks PCs, server rack PCs, just, you know, and uh, graphics cards just chewing through uh, the same stuff that this dedicated hardware did, but it's not that old. It's only, what, you know, six, seven years old, so, but it's was destined for the dumpster, probably because it's faulty. Otherwise, you know, it'd still probably uh, be used, but anyway, who knew 
that Huawei were into this sort of stuff. I had no idea. Just like a lot of people have no idea that Sony and other companies like that are into the professional audio and video uh, type markets as well. And I've done lots of teardown of like really obscure bits of uh, Sony kit and Huawei. Well, I don't know. It's because they're fairly new, uh, like in the public uh, consciousness now. And I only heard of them when they, you know, started making, you know, routers and mobile phones and things like that. So, but yeah. It's a real interesting bit of kit. So yeah, if you're really after like real high-end uh, systems engineering stuff, then like go try, maybe try and get a job on a, like a design team uh, for something like this. Rather, it might be cool to put on your resume, oh yeah, worked on the latest iPhone 7, whoop de doo wank wank. Uh, but you know, working on something like this, is, is, there's a ton of engineering. Uh, the, the team, and wouldn't surprise me if it's a 100 plus uh, team and they work for years on this and yeah just truly remarkable there's a lot of hardware and software engineering that goes into this so anyway if you like that please give it a big thumbs up and yes i did injure myself in this so you know true blood to the tear down gods beauty and as always leave comments uh, down below i do try and uh, read respond and i pin them and all that sort of stuff usually when the video uh is is first released i sort of you know taper off in the uh, days after that but uh, yeah i do try and read as many comments and reply to as many as i can so yeah if you got any info on this please leave it down below as always catch you next time